The city of Philadelphia is synonymous with history and what you're seeing is history being made in South Philadelphia. In the port of Philadelphia's 300 years of existence, this ship is the largest to ever arrive here. And as you're about to learn, an event like this doesn't happen without the leadership of state and local visionaries and decades of planning. Hello, I'm Brad Satin and welcome to a special edition of Ship Philly First, a presentation of Philiport, the show that gives you an inside look at what's happening along the shores of the Delaware River and the critical role the Port of Philadelphia plays in the economy and in the delivery of the products that impact our lives every day. Today, part two of a special edition of Ship Philly First, as we welcome the largest ship to ever arrive here, the CMA CGM Marco Polo. It's the size of more than three football fields. By the numbers, the Marco Polo is more than 175,000 gross tons, 1,300 feet long and 175 feet wide, arriving here with fruits and vegetables, among other things, from Morocco. It's part of the North America Asia Express service, called NAMEX for short. To talk more about the significance, we're joined now by Philiport CEO Jeff Theobald. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So what does the Marco Polo's arrival mean to the Port of Philadelphia? Well, for us, it's a celebration and recognition of a very successful effort and partnership with all of our partners, whether it's the Commonwealth, the city, uh, labor, and the marine terminal operators. To be able to handle the largest ship on the East Coast is something we're very, very proud of. You know, this is kind of a culmination of many things, including us completing the 100-mile channel deepening project. We also had to reconstruct 3,000 feet of berth to support the five new Super Panamax cranes that we ordered. And all this was done during the pandemic time. So I'm very, very proud about the testament of the resolve of the people in Philadelphia to get this done in my team. And we thank CMA CGM for having the trust to, to bring a ship in here to Philadelphia of this size. It's a, definitely a milestone for us. Jobs, I guess, playing a big role. Yeah, absolutely. We are an economic engine for the Commonwealth. And as we create Commonwealth Invest Capital, we create jobs. And we do that in the business manner. You know, we look at the capital, we look at the return, we look at the capital investment, look at the tax revenues. All these components are, are put together in order to support our case to further further capital and do the infrastructure improvements that we need. And this NAMIC service gives Philadelphia a direct connection with Asia, right? Yeah, absolutely. So historically, we have been a kind of a north-south port. We handle ships, uh, South America and Central America that, you know, are handling fruits and vegetables. In order to really grow and, and to be a, a port of relevance, I think you have to have an Asia service. It also creates an opportunity for new imports and exports that we don't handle today in any large degree. It opens up uh, opportunities for discretionary cargo moving over rail over Philadelphia. All these things create more volume, more economic value for the Commonwealth. Philadelphia, of course, competing with other ports for business. So how does the arrival of this ship help? Yeah, I, I think first it, it, it First, it tell, it, for us, it tells the, shows the people of Pennsylvania that we, you know, use the, the dollars that they gave us to invest in capital wisely. And there is a major return on investment on that capital from a job perspective uh, and economic value to the to the uh, state. Um, second, it really shows other ocean carriers and other ports that we're, we're in the game. And, and that's important to us. And, you know, we spent a lot of time, and a lot of money on making sure the infrastructure was built to accommodate large ships. I know when I first got here, we adjusted the size of the cranes that we bought to make sure they were the largest cranes that could handle the largest ships. So what improvements are next? You know, we have additional plans to build other infrastructure improvements. So, you know, we kind of started with a channel. We did the berth, we did the cranes, we're doing the yard with some electrification, and we have to keep moving inland a little bit. So we have to do road infrastructures. We're in heavy discussions with, with PennDOT on developing new road access to and from uh, I-95 to the port directly, which is very important to support our growth. We have funding already for a new refrigerated warehouse to support that demand. We have a dry warehouse that we're building. And very exciting for us is we're going to build a new berth. We haven't built a berth, a new multi-purpose berth in 50 years. And so that work is going to start in the fall. So those are all funded and on the way. So those are exciting times ahead of us. Uh, and then beyond that, we have a, a, you know, our master plan that's coming up for a 2040 plan. We'll have a kind of a, a whole vision of what we're going to do for the port, which will include, you know, maybe tripling uh, container capacity, doubling auto capacity, warehouses everywhere, and a major improvement in our rail services that we have in Philadelphia. All key components, and especially driven and focused on the Asia service. I'm excited and I'm very happy. I'm happy for my team. I'm happy for Pennsylvania. 
it, it's nice to say, look what we did, and it, it's coming now, and this is not the end. This is not the result. This is just the beginning. And I think I think everybody's excited about that. They're excited about the master plan and our continued growth. It's creating a lot of jobs in Philadelphia, and, and we're excited to move forward with the Commonwealth on this. Jeff Theobald, CEO of the Port of Philadelphia, thanks for being with us. Okay, thank you. Here's another look at the Marco Polo, named, of course, after the Italian explorer from the 13th century. Among some of the ship's other recent stops, Vietnam, Thailand, Singapore, Morocco, and now Philadelphia, a major player in the shipping world. So what's it like to pilot a ship this big? Joining us now is Captain David Cuff. He's with the Pilots Association for the Bay and River Delaware. Captain Cuff, thanks so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here and I'm excited to talk about this amazing endeavor that we have. Well, indeed, let's talk about it. Your impressions, what does a container ship of this size mean in your opinion? The culmination of this port community that we have here coming together over the last 30 years from the dredging side to the stevedore side to the infrastructure and terminal operator side to the pilots, the tugs, all coming together and showing that Philadelphia can handle these big ships and wants to handle it. It's a huge, huge success for the entire Delaware River and the port region. So how long have you been a pilot and how have the sizes of these ships changed over the years? Uh, when I started a little over 20 years ago, a large container ship might have held three or 4,000 containers on it. They were anywhere from 700 to maybe 900 feet long. This vessel is 1,299 feet long, so we call it 1,300. If you were to put it on its side straight up in the air, it is larger than the new Comcast building in the city of Philadelphia. In 20 years, we have seen the size of ships almost double in the container industry. So when shippers decide which port to go to, does this really put Philadelphia on the map now in a more significant way? It, it absolutely does. It shows that Philadelphia is not just a small port anymore. It puts us on the map so other shipping companies are going to start to see this and see that Philadelphia has this growth potential and has room to grow and can handle these, these large ships. So it's, it's a huge investment for the whole area. A little bit about yourself. People may not be familiar with the term pilot when guiding a ship. We often think of the term captain. Can you explain exactly what a pilot does? A absolutely. So um, state pilots, we board the vessels out a couple miles offshore, out in the Atlantic Ocean, off of Cape May or Lewis, Delaware on the Delaware side. All foreign flag vessels are required to take a pilot. And, and the main role of a pilot is to protect the marine environment and to ensure the safe and efficient movement of maritime commerce in the state that that pilot works. Most of our pilots are former ship captains, can take the ship around the world. As the ship approaches a port, the ship captain does not know where certain shoals are, how the currents work. They don't take over for the captain, but we get on the ship and we kind of control the navigational movements. Could you talk a little bit about the specialized training involved? For instance, I know there's a facility in Maryland, right? Yes, there is a facility we call MyTags. It's the Maritime Institute of Training and Technology. It is a maritime training center. Uh, they have classroom stuff, which is great, but they also have a large ship simulator. And you think you're on the bridge of a ship. We can go and train in these simulators and we can set wind conditions, we can set visibility, we can set all kinds of weather conditions. We have the, the Port of Philadelphia in the simulator. We can show how these ships work and fit prior to the first one coming. Let's talk a little bit more about the size. You gave the dimensions, how big it is and how it actually fits into the port as it comes in. We did some dredging. We now have a depth of 45 feet. So is that enough? So no, the answer is we would love to go deeper. Deeper is always better. It keeps us competitive. But 45 is a great stepping stone to that, and it is helping us. So with these big ships, and the bigger they get, the deeper they get, because there's more cargo on there. So we're constantly trying to go deeper. We have discussions with the port entities on that all the time. But these ships are so large that they have to come up on a rising tide. So as of right now, the 45 feet is our, is our max that we allow. So it actually has to come in on high tide. It does. So what, what these vessels do is they're so large that we bring them in on a rising tide. So they start out in the ocean off of Lewis, Delaware at the start of the rising tide and they follow the tide all the way up. So when they're in Philadelphia turning around and docking, they're there at high tide. 
In addition to being a pilot, you're also on the Philiport board. How does being a board member give you kind of that big picture view of what's happening here and where we need to go from here? So that, that's been a huge eye opener, especially for me as a pilot, as a mariner, because I don't get to see the other side of it sometimes. And working on the board with the ILA and the Teamsters and industry and port operators, I get to see the whole side of everything, not just the ship side of it, which is great to be able to give my aspect on that. But it's nice to see how the whole thing flows in general and how the port community works together. This is not just about one group or one entity. This is about the whole port community rallying behind dredging the river, the legislator spending money on infrastructure and maintaining that, the terminal operator getting cargo in here and wanting shippers to want to ship to Philadelphia. So this is a big applause and a shout out to everyone in this port community who has made this happen. Well, a big ship is here and it's not going to be the last, right? Exactly. Captain Cuff, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Another look now at the huge ship docked at the Packer Avenue Marine Terminal in South Philadelphia. If you haven't seen part one of our special, we invite you to do so, where we sit down with the chairman of the board of the Port of Philadelphia, Michael Pearson, and Leo Holt with the operator of the Packer Avenue Marine Terminal, where this big ship arrived, to get their thoughts on the importance of this event. It's another reason the Port of Philadelphia has become the fastest growing port in the United States. To learn more, check out our website, philiport.com. I'm Brad Satin. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again on the next edition of Ship Philly First.